Hello and welcome, everybody, to another episode of Last Week in Quantum. I'm your host, Bill Roth, self-proclaimed Silicon Valley marketing genius. This is the show where we review this week's news in the world of quantum computing and its impacts on the world of cybersecurity, AI, and more. And today, with us to discuss this week's articles is none other than QSecure Chief Information Security Officer Craig Devon. Welcome, Craig. Hey, Bill. How are you doing? Nice to see you again. Another great day to be me. What can I tell you? So last week, three really interesting articles. First, a $45 million quantum investment in the UK. Uh, and then, uh, super relevant to QSecure, uh, tech giants form the Post-Quantum Cryptography Alliance, which I hope you'll tell us more about. And finally, love your take on the world's first fault-tolerant quantum computer. So let's get started. So the first article we have, which of course are available in our show notes, uh, is about unlocking the potential of quantum. And apparently, our friends in the UK government have uh, given a $45 million investment to drive breakthroughs in things like brain scanners, navigation systems, and quantum computing. So tell us a little bit more yeah. about that, Craig. Yeah, and I think it's in pounds, so I can do the conversion, right? Oh, yeah, so it's, but you know, times 1.1, 1. 1. 1. okay. Americans. That's real money. Right. Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, you, you know what? I it's exciting. Um, it's it's it doesn't surprise me that you see governments starting to recognize that that this is going to be a path to hopefully a better society. Right? This is an investment in the future. Uh, I think you're going to see almost a bit of a quantum arms race. So I think you'll see more and more governments looking to fund initiatives like this, or there'll be a need within governments that they will associate with uh, quantum computing to solve that. Much like they're looking at AI as being an answer to a lot of these needs for, for governments, you're going to see more of this. Um, the fact that it's brain scanners navigation, so I mean, that, that's a little techie, uh, a little sci-fi. I, I like that. Um, it'll be interesting to see where, you know, what industries lead the way in some of these investments next. Yeah, I agree. I think as you look at sovereign wealth funds, especially for forward thinking investing countries like Saudi Arabia, Germany, and you're going to see a lot of these sovereign wealth funds starting to toss money um, into this area. And um, all, all we can say to them is don't forget your friends at QSecure. So be before we move to the next article, folks, don't forget to subscribe by going to um, LinkedIn and subscribe to our feed there. Just search for Q Secure and Last Week in Quantum. We're also available on popular uh, podcasting platforms. Just look for Last Week in Quantum and subscribe. You'll be helping us out. Our next article comes from uh, basically Security Week was talking about um, tech giants forming a post-quantum cryptography alliance. We were part of this, Craig, right? Tell us about it. Uh, this is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's been in the works for a bit. Just... First off, super proud that uh, QSecure can be mentioned in the same chat. It's like AWS, Cisco, IBM, uh, Intellect, EU, NVIDIA. I mean, it's solid names, right? Household old names. Us being included in, in this effort is fantastic. Um, but, you know, it also, for me, it, it's also a bit of a recognition of the mission of what QSecure has been, the message that we've been saying since, since day one. You know, companies that have that oomph, uh, looking for them to amplify what we've always been saying, you know, looking at understanding uh, kind of some guardrails, right? It feels like this is something that AI could have and should have done before as well. So I'm, I'm excited that we're doing this from a, a post quantum cryptology level. Um, welcome addition to that. Uh, University of Waterloo is part of this as well. Uh, they have a group, as, as in my understanding, part of the cause, as, as I've understood it, uh, with a cool acronym, CRISP. C-R-Y-S-P, but cryptology, security, and privacy. When you think about compliance and you know, my role and, and other CISOs in, around the world, you know, th that's a huge makeup when you look up at compliance data. So having that group's input into this uh, alliance is fantastic. Um, you know, to personalize it, as I look at some of the things like uh, the FIPS series, the FIPS 140 series, that establishes cryptographic modules for, for government and other regulated industries. Um, they only use NIST-approved algorithms. We've all been talking about NIST, right? We know Kyber is likely a PQC addition. Um, 
there's going to be others. How is that going to influence other compliance initiatives like GDPR, SOC, et cetera? I'm hoping that this group can help, uh, you know, have some input or, or put out some information that helps, uh, you know, guide that or inform others on this. Excellent. Uh, we will have the links to a lot of the things that Craig just mentioned in the show notes. So uh, it's really exciting to see this because having been in the industry for a bit, one of the things you notice is as an, as an industry matures, and I can think of two specific instances, as an industry starts to mature, you do see things like this forming. For example, back in the 90s, there was the object database alliances uh, when cloud started getting to be a big deal, um, you saw the cloud security alliance with Java. There was the Java community process. So this just means that the industry is maturing and becoming a real thing. It's super exciting. I love that term, uh, Bill. Real quick, it, that that maturing. You know, as we've talked on. You know, other and others at QSecure has talked on this episode and other mediums. You, you're seeing that maturing coming through information. You're seeing this tipping point coming, and and I'm helping having QSecure help move it uh, the tipping point closer to reality is exciting. It really is. Our next article is the world's first fault tolerant quantum computer launching this year, ahead of a ten thousand qubit machine in 2026. Uh, didn't know that we had a schedule for that. This is an article from Live Science. Tell us more about it, Craig. Uh, there's a company called QERA, also a startup. Uh, their naming structure is very similar to how QSecure uh, works, so love that name. Um, you know, it's exciting to see progress. We've seen a lot of these, I would say, statements of here's our goals, um, although some have seemed audacious, this really looks like a, a, a stepping stone to go in the, in the right direction. When you are delivering a quantum error correction, quantum computer that has error correction built in, that would be a huge step forward, right? Being able to make the effectiveness, the efficacy of the qubits that much um, it's better, for lack of a better, better term, or effective, right? That is huge. Um, and, and again, a stepping stone in, in our, I'm keen to see this. One. I will be watching this one uh, throughout the year. Yeah, it's going to be super exciting. As, as folks, uh, longtime listeners will know that we have sort of been tracking, you know, almost whatever the largest um, sort of amount of qubits that have been either built or simulated. And so this is just another important step on the maturation of the technology. So uh, awesome news, folks. Just a reminder, you can find all the articles today in the show notes. If you want weekly quantum updates, join our mailing list by visiting the LinkedIn page. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. And if you're on the uh, podcast platforms, please drop us a rating on Apple or wherever you pick up your podcasts. That's all for today's show. I'm Bill Roth, humble self-proclaimed Silicon Valley marketing genius. And with us this week has been longtime friend of the show, Craig Devin. He is our Chief Information Security Officer, also known as our CISO IT Warlord. Thanks again for stopping by, Craig. Excellent. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, everyone. And folks, we'll see you next week on Last Week in Quantum.